Hello there, my name is Jack Edwards and I take my role of the internet's resident librarian very, very seriously. And as your patron saint of book recommendations, I want to make sure that you always have the perfect book to read. So I headed over to my Instagram and I asked you guys, what are you looking for? What is the kind of book that you want to read? And then in return, I am going to give you a book recommendation that fits that prompt. So. Let's waste no time and dive straight into it. Someone said, I really want a book that just feels like a little kiss on the forehead and I've got you. This is A Psalm for the Wild Built. It's the first in a series, so it's also something that you can kind of get stuck into and if you need more of it, there is more that exists. It's a book set in a kind of distant future where industrialization has sort of been reversed. So people have gone back to a very natural way of living without machinery and we follow a monk who meets a robot and the robots have kind of been cast out of society and the monk and the robot meet and they discuss life and its intricacies and their different ways of living. They learn for each other, they learn about each other's communities, they're very empathetic and open-minded, and I think it just makes you feel an appreciation for life and the world and the way that we live and the human condition. If you're having a bit of a Billie Eilish, what was I made for moment, this might be the antidote to that. A book that feels like sitting on top of a skyscraper and seeing the veins of the city move beneath you. Okay, Lord Reference, I see you, I feel you. I have the book, I'm just trying to find it. Ah, uh, here it is. This is a book called Manhattan Transfer. It's by John Dos Passos. It is kind of about the kaleidoscope of city living. It's all about New York City. Set in the 1920s, we follow a range of characters who are all existing at the same time, living independent lives. Throughout the city, each of them faces their own difficulties and troubles and struggles. It's colourful, it's multifaceted, it kind of makes me think of the term sonder. And the term sonder refers to the moment of realisation that everyone else around you is living as complex a life as you are. Every single person is having an experience, is perceiving the world in a different way, and has not just the moment that you see them, but a whole day and a whole week and a whole month and a whole year and a whole life. That is the sensation of Sonda, realizing that each individual person around you is living as complicated a life as you are. But John Dos Passos really creates this whole universe within the city, and it's a kind of lyrical meditation on what it is to exist in this world. And I just think it's so great. I'm looking for a book that gives me the sensation of flying. Okay, I think I have a very literal Recommendation for you. This is Great Circle. It's by Maggie Shipstead. It's a book about a woman who's trying to circumnavigate the earth in a plane, but she crashes. And so we have two perspectives. One is the woman when she's on this kind of adventure and the story of her life. And that's in kind of like the 1950s. And then we also get the perspective of a modern day woman, present day, who is an actress playing her in a movie. And so she kind of starts to find the similarities and differences between her and the woman she's trying to play. It's about loss. It's about obsession. It's about sacrifice. It's about pursuit of the unknown, about defying expectations. I think it's really interesting to have this kind of Hollywood star and also someone who was seeking to fly all around the world, you know? Very different career trajectories, but actually they become more similar than we may initially think on surface level. Oh my gosh, my camera's gonna die. Give me one second. Okay, fixed it. The next request is a fictional book for people interested in Brexit or anti-EU sentiment. Okay, that is really specific, but I do have one. It's this book here, it's called Harvest. This is by Jim Crace. If you're really interested in allegories, books with a lot of symbolism and kind of deeper meaning, like a book you could write an English lit essay about, Harvest is the book for you. It's about this very isolated, kind of insular village, and then three outsiders arrive. It's about hostility and the way that the villagers treat the outsiders and how they perceive them, and ultimately how their lack of tolerance leads to their own undoing. So. There's a lot of parallels to the feelings or sentiments of people who were very strongly in favor of Brexit. Just read the book, it's really, really interesting. I recommend. A book for when you're dealing with someone you love having an addiction. Okay, it's gotta be this little gem right here, Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This book follows a child called Shuggy growing up in Scotland and his mother Agnes, who is an alcoholic. And I just think it's written with such empathy and compassion and Agnes is fully fleshed out as a whole character in her own right. We understand that she is flawed and that she makes mistakes and that sometimes she isn't a good mother on paper to Shuggy, but in equal measure we understand that she's trying her best and that she is a victim of her circumstances. And I think it just does a really good job of contextualizing how someone can end up in a situation where they're no longer in control. She is such a character, she is written in full Technicolor 
and I just think both Shuggy and Agnes are characters that you're rooting for, and so it's tough, it's tender, it's sad, but it is also beautiful, super powerful, and like I said, I think it's just an exercise in compassion for people who are going through things that maybe we haven't, and to me it feels like a modern classic. Okay, this person played the ultimate Uno reverse card and said, what is the top of your TBR, Jack? So it's actually this book right here. This is Caledonian Road by Andrew O'Hagan. This is by the author of Mayflies, which is a book that absolutely destroyed me. It was so sad, but so beautiful. And I loved the way that Andrew O'Hagan captured the essence of his characters. Like they felt so real and believable, and they felt like really fair depictions of people, in the same way that I was saying about how Shucky Bane is about a character that you love, but you're also aware that they are capable of making mistakes and that they are flawed. I think that that was kind of the case with Mayflies as well. The characters had flaws, but you were still rooting for them and understanding why they behaved in the way that they did. Caledonian Road is a kind of state of the nation novel. It's about 700 pages. It's an epic brick of a book. It's set in May 2021. It's kind of about high society in London. I just think it's gonna be really, really interesting. And it's also about how a man's life comes tumbling down but occurs in the public eye. And I think that will just be really, really interesting and captivating to read. So Caledonian Road is top of my TBR. A book that feels like taking a walk in the pouring rain at midnight. It's gotta be Mieko Kawakami. It has got to be All the Lovers in the Night. The first page of this book is about exactly that feeling. It really focuses on the lights in the night and you know, whether that's street lights or shop windows, the stars, the moon, people's phone screens. I think it really looks at life on a granular level. There's some thought-provoking conversations between the main character and the people around her. She's also a very lonely character. But I think as we go through the novel, she kind of reconciles the idea of being alone, not necessarily being the same as being lonely. The beauty of this book is just astonishing, it's totally mesmerizing, and I think it gives you appreciation for the things going on around you. So all the lovers in the night, I think, feels like walking in the pouring rain, but in a good way. You know when you do that with intentionality. Translated from the Japanese by Sam Betts and David Boyd. I will never shut up about how much I love that book. A book I can fall in love with, but not be sad when it's over. Paul Murray's The Bee Sting. This is an Irish family saga. We follow each member of a four person kind of nuclear family. We start off with a teenage daughter who has this kind of melodramatic, almost superficial way of viewing the world at first. And she actually kind of talks about her parents like they're just outlines, you know, like they're just the abstract idea of parents. They only really come to life once we get to their perspectives and suddenly we start to understand them as well and they're sort of coloured in. It's about how different people perceive the same events in very different ways and it's all a matter of perspective. It covers a whole range of things, it covers the climate crisis, and I would describe the structure of this novel as being almost like a spiral, so we start out very wide. And then as the novel goes on, it's kind of speeding and spiraling out of control to the point where it's so tense it feels like it's about to explode, and that is kind of the final page. And so I think it reaches this kind of breaking point, which feels very cathartic, you know, to close the final page and be like, it's done, you know? I, I remember my jaw just dropping when I read the final page, throwing the book onto my bed and being like, whoa! What I just read was insane. It's funny, it's witty, but it's also very dramatic and powerful. It's a big book, but it kept me completely hooked and also on my toes at all times. So I really recommend The Beasting. I think this is a very satisfying book to read and then finish and kind of come to your own conclusions. It's a book I kept thinking about, but I didn't feel sad. And I really fell in love with each of these characters in turn. I also listened to The Beasting as an audiobook and really enjoyed it. I love listening to Irish books as audiobooks, mostly because I just love the Irish accent, but the cast really brought it to life. And speaking of audiobooks, the next prompt is mysteries and thrillers that will make your heart race. And I love to listen to mysteries and thrillers as audiobooks. They're the kind of thing I love to listen to when I'm at the gym, when I'm cooking, when I'm just walking around, kind of running errands, because it gives me something else to kind of focus on. And so I'm buzzing to let you know that today's video is very kind sponsored by Audible. Now Audible has a range of amazing mystery and thriller audiobooks. For example, we have The Coldest Case, Lone Wolf, End of Story, Good Half Gone, and of course, The Guest. And the best news is, new members can actually get a free trial of Audible to check out these amazing audiobooks. And membership also includes access to Audible Originals, podcasts, and being able to download all of the included titles that you want. You guys know I use Audible every single day, I talk about it all the time. My current listen is, I have some questions 
Suspicions for You by Rebecca Mackay, which is a kind of true crime story about a woman who returns to her old school as a teacher. And she's kind of reminiscing on her past and when she was at the school and about a girl who was murdered there. She is there to teach people about multimedia and different media forms, specifically podcasting, and this one girl in her class decides to make a podcast about the girl who was murdered when she was at the school. So I can't stop listening to that. You can head to the URL, it will be linked in my bio, and check out Audible for all of your audiobook needs, especially the mystery and thrillers. I'm a fanfic lover who wants to challenge myself to read something more literary, but specifically with LGBTQ plus characters. I actually, I have the perfect recommendation for you. This was like made in a lab for you. This is In Memoriam by Alice Wynn. Alice Wynn is actually an ex-fanfic writer. This is her glorious fiction debut. And it's about these two boys who are at a boarding school together. They've always had this kind of like latent crush on one another. And then the First World War comes around and one of the characters actually has German heritage and people in their town are starting to kind of act a bit suspicious around his family and so he goes to the front line basically to prove everyone wrong. His friend from his school later joins him on the front line and we see them go from boys to men and how they kind of at first don't really recognize each other in this new context but their relationship is so special, it's so intimate, it's very intense and I think it really captures the essence of fan fiction writing whilst also being a new creation. It also speaks about the horrors of the western front, of injury, of violence, of being a prisoner of war. It is so deeply unsettling and moving, but just exquisite to read. So I highly recommend In Memoriam. A book for someone who just loves love. Okay, this one's for the lovers. So there's a couple of books that are more about like the theory of love, or like the abstract idea of love. So you have Conversations on Love, which features a range of contributors who were all interviewed about love. So like Dolly Alderton, Candace Carty Williams, Lisa Tadeo, Alain de Baton, Roxane Gay, all of those people, they talk about redefining romance, accepting change in relationships, falling in love slowly, about friendship, about loneliness. It says, love as strangers, parents, friends, endings, beginnings. It's about love in all its different forms and it's kind of a study on how love manifests itself in the world. Um, and that's by Natasha Lunn. And then also, of course, All About Love by Bell Hooks, which is Bell Hooks personal exploration of love. She talks about her childhood and about spirituality, about community, but also romantic love. It covers a lot of bases. I think there's a quote in here where she says that often we think about love as a noun, but how different would the world be if we thought of it more as a verb, as something that we do actively, constantly. It's provocative, it's personal, and ironically, I love it. Where is a hat? Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. This is specifically about female friendship and love in your kind of 20s, being messy, being chaotic, and ultimately the people that you fall back on. This is kind of more of a memoir kind of vibe. What else do we have? I mean, there's Writers and Lovers by Lily King. This feels like a very hopeful book. And then if you want more of a steam kind of romance, this is The Kiss Quotient. It's about a woman called Stella who has Asperger's syndrome and she basically wants to learn more about sex. So she hires an escort to help her and then of course they kind of fall in love. It's very sweet, it's very endearing, and I recommend this one too. Okay, leading on from that, someone asked for a book about sex but not smart, something more intellectual, like the abstract idea of sex. Uh, okay, it has got to be The Unbearable Lightness of Being. This kind of considers monogamy, infidelity, philosophical speculations about the nature of relationships and human connection. This feels like essential reading. I think that there are so many quotes that I underlined. It's just really incredibly written. It's translated from the Czech by Michael Henry Heim. I really highly recommend this book to everyone. And definitely like a very intellectually stimulating experience. Like this is one for when you want to think. A book to read when you're sitting on a train and you want the person opposite to fall in love with you. Hmm. I think that I would fall in love with anyone who was reading Toni Morrison. This is Jazz. It is, of course, a very musically oriented book. One of the best ways I've heard Toni Morrison's writing described is that she dreams up a world with complete authority. Like, she is so self-assured when she creates these communities and these fictional worlds and groups of people and societies and jazz is no exception to that. It's passionate, it's profound, it's a non-linear narrative that kind of goes back and forth, thinking about the melancholies, the hopes, the fears of domestic and city life. It has some great quotes, I feel like you'd just be sitting there underlining things and the person opposite you is going to be like, wow, an intellectual. And trust me, if you're sitting there reading this book, they will never forget you. That person is going to fall in love in seconds. A book that has inspired other writers. 
It's gotta be Zadie Smith. In fact, I know exactly the book. It's NW. So many very important writers hold Zadie Smith as their gold standard, you know? I'm thinking of like, I remember Caleb Azuma Nelson referencing this book. Intensely funny, richly varied, always unexpected. A joyous, optimistic, angry masterpiece. No better English novel will be published this year. That's a quote from the Daily Telegraph. This is a brilliant, tragic comic that follows four Londoners after they've left their childhood council estate grown up and moved on to different lives. That is NW, this is a book I've been meaning to get around to for so long. A book that gives the same vibes as Taylor Swift's You're On Your Own Kid. <sighs> hmm. Maybe this one, this is Second Place by Rachel Cusk. It's about this woman who lives in this remote coastal landscape and she invites this famous artist to come and live with her and do a residency and his presence kind of shifts her life a little bit and makes her put things into perspective and ultimately, I think she realizes that despite having people physically around her, she is on her own. I will say it's a very profound book, but there are some absolute zingers of quotes in here. And I think that the isolation of the landscape, like the fact that there is no one around, really adds that feeling of being on your own kid. You always have been, you know? <laughs> Someone says, a book that is just fun, I don't want to cry today. And that, my friend, is Happy Hour by Marlo Granados. This is a book that just centers joy. It's about these two girls who move to New York City. They're fun, they're confident, they're charismatic, and they get themselves into all kinds of scrapes and silly, ridiculous situations. They're kind of socialites. They sell dresses for a living. They spend every bit of money that they earn on going out and having a fun time and drinking, partying. It's set in the summer in New York City, they head out to the Hamptons. It just is frivolous, but in the best possible way. And it's just so much fun to read. An essay collection that is actually good. The Whole Picture by Alice Proctor is the colonial story of the arts in our museums and why we need to talk about it. This is a very accessible, it's described as jargon free by the Financial Times and I think that's really crucial. It's very accessible. I think about this book all the time, especially whenever I'm at an art museum, because it talks about the act of curation, about why certain art is displayed and the stories that are being told, but also, crucially, the stories that are not being told. It's about the future of art galleries and how they can be decolonized. It talks about specific pieces of art, so you kind of learn about things that you may end up going to see in a gallery at some point, but it's also just essential reading, I think, for our modern day discourse about decolonization. Celebrity memoirs that are actually worth reading. Paris Hilton was the biggest surprise for me. Trevor Noah's book is great. Viola Davis, Emily Ratajkowski, Jeanette McCurdy, this is my favourite one ever. A book with a quote that you'll never forget reading for the first time. <sighs> okay, there's this one that my friend Dakota and I read when we were in a little cabin in Scotland and she read it to me and we both were just like, that is so great. It was from this book, Things We Say in the Dark. It was this by Kirsty Logan and this one quote, I made you house after house after house, but each time it was too small, too losable, too easily destroyed. Finally, there I stand in front of you, everything removable or soft in me gone. I've made this final house for you, the rafters my ribs, the floor my flattened feet, the overhead lights my unblinking eye. Come lie on the couch of the long bone of my thigh, come rest your head on the cushion of my slow beating heart, come home. That floored me, and I hold that <laughs> as like complete excellence. If I could write like that, I would be buzzing. Oh, and also the beginning of chapter 12 of Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. I know I bang on like a broken record about this book, but the beginning of chapter 12 is all about the necessity of writing about ordinary things like love and sex and relationships and communication and how some people write that off as not being elevated enough to write literature about. And Sally says, but on your deathbed isn't the thing that you'll think about the people that you met, the people that you love, and therefore why shouldn't we write about them? And the thing that I love most about humans is that we are so silly and stupid that while we should have been saving the world and fixing the economy and the climate crisis, we were just so obsessed with each other that we were distracted. We were so stupidly in love with each other and maybe we will go extinct as a result, but maybe that's a beautiful reason to go extinct. I just think it's so special. I love that book. I'm so pumped that this is the year we get a new Sally Rooney book. Give me a non-fiction book about something super, super niche. 
What's the most niche non-fiction book I've read? Oh, who am I kidding? It's definitely this one. This is called Deep Sniff. And this is a book about the history of poppers. Kind of random, but genuinely really good. A graphic novel to get totally lost in. My graphic novels are down here. This one, The Marvels. Firstly, look at that. Isn't it just the most beautiful book you've ever seen? I hate the spine though. The spine is so random. And then that is what the rest of the book looks like, you know? That, that just doesn't really fit but I love that. I'm just realizing that I put the dust jacket on it upside down. I need to fix that. But anyway, this book is half graphic novel and just absolutely spellbinding. And then the other half is a novel. I actually got this recommendation from Olivia Rodrigo. Genuinely very good. It's about a boy who survives a shipwreck and is taken in by a theater and generations of his family flourish in the entertainment and theater industry. And then we end up following someone a century later who lives in this kind of house of wonders and yeah, it's just really interesting as a concept, very genre bending. We also have Oxygen Mask, which is the story of 2020 told through the medium of graphic novel. The art is absolutely beautiful and stunning. Um, and I think it's basically like three sentences told over the course of this whole book, complemented by amazing illustrations over the course of this graphic novel. A quick weird read that feels like a fever dream. Where is Open Throat? Oh my gosh, it's here. This is Open Throw. It's about this mountain lion who has existed on the fringes of society and has kind of been observing humans this entire time. But when a man-made fire destroys his habitat, he has to come down to the realm of the humans. It's very interesting. It's told in a peculiar way because you have all these kind of line breaks. So visually it almost looks like poetry. And it basically is a way of zooming out on human society from an outsider's perspective. Almost like if you could explain the earth to an alien, how would you explain it? This is another species looking at us and contemplating what it means to be human, I suppose. And it kind of means that you as the reader begin to look at our society in all its weirdness. And like I said, it feels like a fever dream. A book that you think Lana Del Rey would enjoy. In the Dream House and My Dark Vanessa, they're both concerned with abuse, with complicated power dynamics, with someone that you care about not being good for you, which I think is something that Lana kind of talks about in her lyrics. My Dark Vanessa especially is in conversation with Lolita, which I think is something that Lana Del Rey has found herself very fascinated with too, but both are lyrically written, especially in the dream house. This is just sublime and exquisitely written, though heartbreaking of course. That is probably the way that I would describe Lana Del Rey's writing as well, so I think that In the Dream House and My Dark Vanessa would be the two books I think that Lana Del Rey would really enjoy. If you're interested in the themes of Lana's music, I think that you would enjoy these too. Okay, one final prompt, let's see. A book about a couple who realize they're actually kind of bad for each other. We have Good Intentions. This is about a couple who have been together for years and years and years, but the guy has not told his parents about his girlfriend because of their prejudices. And they have some really intense arguments. It's very, very interesting, but ultimately you do realize maybe they would be better off with other people. And then also, of course, Cleopatra and Frankenstein. I love this book. I know that people have mixed opinions about this one, but I personally really like it. It's about these two people who meet at a party and quickly fall for each other, and their marriage is sped up by the fact that one of them needs a visa to get a green card. We follow along with their relationship as they realize that actually they may not be that good for each other and are kind of bringing out each other's worst sides and each other's worst traits, and it's just this really toxic, relationship, they move on, there's lots of other peripheral characters too, and we're just following a group of people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, navigating life, stumbling through adulthood, being messy, being confused. There's a character called Eleanor who you will absolutely fall in love with, and it's truly unforgettable. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope that you found the next book that you would love to read. If you want to make sure that your requests are in the next video, head over to my Instagram where I will be asking you guys what you want to read next on my questions tab. So head over there, follow me for that. You don't want to miss it. And you know, I post some other fun things too. <laughs> Anyways, all the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. Happy reading. Bye-bye.